Hi everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. Today I want to talk to you about two serious questions. Why many entrepreneurs who perform preliminary calculations of the profitability of fish farming business can't get the full understanding of the economics, as no matter which way they perform calculations, it turns out that their future business will be unprofitable. Why do some farmers and entrepreneurs, when launching large farms, have a lot of problems with setting up their business properly, with the operation of the farm, and so on? Very often, these two problems have one common root, and that root is the approach that's used for small farms as well as for industrial-scale ones. So make sure to watch this video to the end, because I'm going to figure out the seven main differences in the approach to small farms and industrial-scale ones. We will work out what doesn't make sense to do at a mini rice farm, and what is better and even mandatory to do if you are building an industrial-scale farm. So here we go. And firstly, we will talk about farm stuff. What is the difference in the approach at a mini rest farm and at a large industrial one? Let's imagine the following situation. You consider farm economics to be relatively small. You have included there a salary of the director, deputy director, the biologist, ichthyologist, ichthyopathologist, pathologist, chief operator, operators, and something in your economics doesn't work. Well, this is kind of understandable, because you are calculating economics of a farm with a capacity of 5 tons of sturgeon per year. This is not the approach that should be used in this case when organizing a farm of this level, because as a rule, small farms are run by the owner by himself, and in extreme cases there is someone else who helps him, someone from the family or the employees on standby basis. At the same time, if you transfer the same approach to a large industrial farm, you are likely to fail. Because at a large-scale farm, there are more processes to be performed and controlled, they are more serious and require more responsibility. Therefore, it's when the stuff is needed, the stuff consisting of the director, the biologist, ichthyopathologist, laboratory assistant, fish farmer, operator, driver, accountant, and so on. Yes, depending on the size of the farm and the complexity of the processes, different team structure might be required. That's the first issue. Let's go further. The second is the production organization and the level of farm automation. Let's imagine the same farm with the capacity of 5 tons of sturgeon per year. After I included into economic calculations 20 members of staff, I say to them, listen, let's automate the farm as much as possible. Let's provide for the whole system for monitoring water parameters. Let's equip it with up-to-date technological devices. Let's provide for automatic fish sorting and fish transferring, centralized feeding system, computerized control, and we will manage everything remotely just by monitoring all the process from the computer. Well, I presume you understand. These farm costs are inflated to such an extent that it's likely to never pay off the investment. So, at a small home farm, as well as at a relatively small one, on, there is no point in putting super-duper automation units. Of course, it's up to you to decide, but this is my recommendation. That said, at an industrial farm, if you don't have a high level of automation, you are going to end up with extra stuff costs and additional risks. Which exactly? For instance, if any equipment unit fails, a part of the fish, millions or even tens of millions of pieces will just die. So, in the case of a large farm, be sure to provide for maximum automation, standby units, and so on. This is the second difference in approach. The third important issue is the farm security. If you run a small farm, you can hire a security guard, install video surveillance all around the perimeter, take care of fingerprints control, and so on. I won't exaggerate any further. What I mean is that you can install all possible security systems, three power supply reserve units, two hidden reserve units, envisage water supply from three different sources, and so on. All that would be cool. It would be super safe, like flying a new Airbus, but it would be very expensive. Thus, at a small farm, everything has to be relatively simple in order for the farm to be profitable. At the same time, at a large industrial farm, you must provide for backup sources of oxygen, electricity, water supply, you must have maximum sanitary safety, which implies full access control. Otherwise, sooner or later, so to say security gaps will take their toll and have a very detrimental effect on your fish farming business. The fourth is the number of technological modules. We will take the example of the same farm with the capacity of 5 tons per year where you have 20 employees. It's automated at a state-of-the-art level. All security systems are in place and are under FPS control. 
The next thing is to distribute technological units. Let's imagine, we start doing incubation at a small farm. We will divide the incubation unit into 15 modules. Each module will contain 300 kilograms. Well, it's likely to be very, very expensive. Sure, it's safe, but the question is what for? Therefore, at a small farm, simple processes take place, and they are all carried out in one RAS module. You have tanks, water treatment system, that's all. Nothing else should be invented there. At the same time, large-scale farms usually tend to increase safety and convenience due to the fact that there is a separate incubation unit, a separate level department, a live feed block, fry and grow out departments, brood stock department, quarantine tanks, so that these blocks are separated, and there it makes sense, because if at a large farm, all the fish, including fry and lava, will be held in one department. As a minimum, fish will simply start periodically dying. As a maximum, sooner or later, there will be some equipment failure, and all your fish just so you know what will happen then. And this is another difference in the approach to small and large-scale farms. And the fifth is the number of technological operations. At a small farm, everything is very simple. You buy fry, you feed it until it grows up to the grow-out weight, and as soon as it reaches this weight, you transfer it for a while to purging tanks and then sell the fish. That's it. No significant competence is needed there. At the same time, the number of technological operations at a large farm is much higher. It's necessary to incubate the fertilized eggs, raise the lava to flood, transfer to dry feed. And these are, by the way, the most complex operations from practical point of view. Then you grow fry up to grow out fish, form the brood stock, carry out the selection, get fertilized eggs. A whole bunch of technological operations, which require competence and qualified team. Therefore, this is another difference between a small farm and a large one. The next is technological spaces or rooms. At a small farm, you could have one or two rooms that fulfill all the functions. Their feed is being stored, air blowers, oxygen supply units are installed, and operator's place is also located there. In general, they're multifunctional. At a large farm, you will have to provide for a separate operator's room, laboratory, sanitary room, clock room, feed storage, boiler room, control room, ventilation room, and so on. There can be up to 15 rooms serving different purposes, and it's really necessary at the large-scale farms. And there is no point in transferring this approach to a small rice facility, because everything is much simpler there. One or two additional rooms, and the issue is solved. This is one more difference between a small and a large farm. And the last thing I want to mention is sales. Let's imagine once again a small farm. You need to sell 5 tons of sturgeon per year, and you decide to sell this amount of fish to the retail chains. You consider the wholesale prices and think, well, something about the economics must be wrong. It's obvious why it doesn't work, because you are trying to enter wholesale chains. It doesn't make sense for small farms. All fish from small farms is usually sold retail. That is, you have your own customer base, maybe some small shops, online sales, delivery. That's it. There is nothing else to come up with. And all fish is sold at retail prices. So the economics of a small farm is calculated based on retail prices. At the same time, running a large farm, you can't count sales at retail prices, because it makes no sense to sell such volume of products in retail. As a rule, it's really like that. You need to sell wholesale. You hire a sales team. And don't forget about VAT, because you work with large wholesalers. So at a large farm, the sales are also set up a little bit differently. At a small farm, the owner might sell all the fish by himself. At a large farm, there is a team. They sell wholesale. They sell including VAT. In general, this is the seventh major difference between the approach to small farms and the large industrial ones. Today we have talked about the seven major differences in the approach to running a small farm and a large-scale one. I hope you have found it useful. You have drawn the line that you need to cross by changing your approach, by changing your tactics in your business. If so, press the like button, subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to grow fish and earn good money from it. It was Anton Pelcher. Bye.